So me and the Bikes and Beards team did it once again. We found a super old motorcycle to try to get it running and ride it home. But this time is a little different. Instead of being at a shop or someone's driveway or a field, we're in a Walmart parking lot where we belong. So, all right, so here's what's going on. Here's why we are in the Walmart parking lot somewhere in Jim Thorpe. Uh, we bought a motorcycle, very, really awesome motorcycle at an estate sale. We picked it up, we were not able to Put it, get it running there. He didn't want to be on camera. I didn't want the property on camera. So we took it to the next closest place. We got this tent because it's raining. And we're going to show it to Craig for the first time. He doesn't know who, but he doesn't know what it is. I tried my best to keep it a secret from Craig. This bike means something. It's not just some bike. <laughs> I'm excited. I get so many surprises. Should I shut my eyes? Yeah, sure. I'll, yeah, you should close your eyes. I'll unload it. All right. It's another 45 WLA, it's probably a 42. Just like our other bike, but instead of red, this one's blue, but this is a non-race version. This one's not all been raced out. It's actually in pretty decent shape. So me and Craig were having this big debate of what color do we paint the other one. I wanted blue, he wanted red. The other one was red. Well, now we don't have to paint the other one blue. We can just paint it red like Craig wanted because we got a blue one. We, we loaded this bike up pretty quick. We got out of there as fast as we could, and now we're gonna get to really look at it and see what we got. Oh, I can hear you pushing it, it sounds fast. All right, Craig, check it out. Oh my gosh, that is a 45, isn't it? I got another one, yeah. Flathead. An actual WLA. Wow, <laughs> that's funny. So Craig and I took a few minutes to look over the bike, but we had no time to waste. So we did our secret handshake and then set off to breathe life back into this 80 year old artifact. I brought my own tools. Nice, you were definitely prepared. And if by the grace of God, we were able to get this thing running with no extra parts other than the battery, spark plug, and whatever we can MacGyver ourselves from Walmart, I'm gonna try to drive this thing home. Hopefully it's better than the last time I drove a WLA home. Let's see if we have spark this way. I'm not seeing any. What do those plugs look like? Brand new? I can't get to them. Oh. Uh, actually, do you have a little adjustable? Do I, do I have a little adjustable? I I bought two tools and one of them is a little adjustable. That's it. My wrenches don't go up to seven eighths in my little tool kit. Wait a second. What's that big giant thing on the back of that bike? Toolbox. Is that a toolbox? You think there's tools in there? I don't know. If I were gonna hide tools, I would hide them in a toolbox. How do you think we open that? It's gotta be good, it's leaking oil. Hello? Sounds empty. We were not able to get any sparks, so we decided to swap out the battery with one that we robbed from our WLDR project. That should lift up. There we go. Hey, look at that. We got the battery. Look at this. Somebody paid a lot of money to make that ugly seat. It's a tough one. I don't know if this is like how it's supposed to be or how it's not supposed to be. Positive on this side. So it was civilianized? Well, I don't actually, I don't know. Let's, um, here's the, I mean, let's, Let's look at the, uh, here's the VIN right here. So as far as I know, WLAs were, military, were the military bikes. At some point in time, this was a possibly a military bike. And now it looks like this. Once we put the battery in, we had our first big major breakthrough, a sign of life for this old Harley Davidson. What do you think? One for ignition, two for lights? I'm gonna go with that. We got lights. We got lights right here. Oh, nice. What do they call these things? Cat eyes. Cat eyes, is that what they call them? Yeah. How about? Now, yeah. we got headlight, we got tail light. Nice. Come on, the WLDR has. All right, so one turn, let's all right, let's see one we got turn. spark. Not seeing any. Well, I felt compression when I kicked it. Can you feel compression? Not now, because, well, because the, oh, I, no, I don't feel compression. It goes like this. Now I'll try that. Now we were not getting any spark from the wires, but we were getting spark from the points. So we decided to call a good friend who just happens to be the expert on these things. Yo, dude. What's up, Matt? Hey, I recognize you from YouTube. Hey, you're the guy from YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, man? Hey, um, question for you. So we are, um, we got a good battery in it and 
we're getting a little bit of spark from the points, but we're not getting spark up to the, the wire when we try to spark test to it. Plugs. Yeah, when we try to test it on the, uh, on the head. So Matt fills us in on how the ignition system works on these old WLAs. So there ought to be a wire that runs from the distributor to the coil. You see, the, the, like from the battery, it goes to the switch. The switch, it goes to the coil. The other side of the coil goes to the points. From the information that he told us, he thinks it could be the coil. It's common for these aftermarket coils to go bad. And if it is the coil, we can order one online and have one within a few days. The problem is we, want, we need one here right now. But for us really to know what the problem is, we need a multimeter to test each component and we forgot ours. Hey, hey Craig, what we're lacking in meter, we make up in bullhorn. So me and Ben went into the Walmart to grab one. But while we did, something amazing happened. Craig, you having fun? I'm always having fun. Oh, I know. Oh! What did it do? I got spark. No, where? Where, where? Show me. Oh, I saw it. Yo, hey guys, this is Temp Sean. I'm here with Craig. He's fixing a bike. <laughs> He's gonna be so either happy or pissed. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what the deal is with this gas. I think we lost it. We had it running. Nah. -uh. Yeah. Nah. -uh. Uh huh. Dan, come on. It was running for for a brief moment. You got still. So you, so you saying we got spark? Yes. I feel like I just lost spark, but we had it running. Like five seconds, something uh, like that. I don't, yeah, it, it ran for a little bit, it stopped. I'll believe it when I see it. How'd you guys make out? We found a multimeter. Wow. And some wrenches. First we got some wrenches, then Ben was like, hey, there's missing a bunch of wrenches. A bunch of wrenches were stolen out of the pack. <laughs> Tell me, Craig, how did it sound? It, it sounded good enough that I'm excited. So what, what did you do? I uh, was playing around with spark plug caps a little bit the ends yeah it's about ready to just break these fins off um there's a chance i have it flooded now oh man bam nailed it very wet very wet uh i did it didn't run i think it pumped some up because the top of the tank was wet i see a piston in there i'm never gonna get this spark plug out of here am i is this supposed to be an oil outlet a drain for, for, when, for, when, for when people put gasoline in it. <laughs> Who would do such a thing? <laughs> just... It wasn't as low as I thought. Oh no, I put it in. Oh shoot. What are some other options here? We can pull the engine. Oh, we could pull the engine. I think it was just flooded. I'm going with flooded. Let's be honest. This is the most Walmart thing you can do. <laughs> <laughs> Rebuilding your Harley Davidson in the parking lot of Walmart. This right here should be what's on the Georgia state flag. Except there should be a big oil stain below us. That'd be more appropriate. And a lady and a wife beater yelling at you. <laughs> now that we think we're getting semi-consistent spark, and it has fuel, and we assume that it has enough compression for it to run because it ran earlier for a moment, we are now ready to fire this bike back up. Okay. Let's, uh... Do, do the whatever starts it and yada yada match it. Oh, it gets a little lightheaded. You gonna pass out? I'm working Don't on it. Give me the clip if you're gonna pass out. I'm working on it. Key one switch. This thing, half turn, half turn. Oh yeah, we're, we're putting fuel out of the carburetor. Oh, we didn't do it with the choke. The choke was on. Maybe now the choke should be off. Yeah, see, whoa. What'd you do, Craig? I don't know. Something what just blew out the... What was that? Did you see that? Yeah. Did you start kicking it? Uh, just a, I don't have that plug in, so just nice and easy. Yeah, okay, now we got spark. Oh, you got spark from the plug? Yeah. Whoa! That almost ran on one cylinder right there. I haven't been this excited since the last time I heard it almost run. Oh, Choke. <laughs> yeah! I told 
<laughs> take that. Yeah, there we go. Can they take the choke off? Choke off. This is amazing. It's Let's, learning a lot of stuff. Yeah, we want to kill it and check the oil. Yeah, 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 yeah. It idles. <laughs> it does. The generator light's still on. Pop that, pull that dipstick, see what that looks like. I'm gonna throw this on a while. Yep, not enough. I don't know how long it should run before it starts pumping. I think that's the oil light, and the oil light went out. Why does it say, that's danger, that's refill, anything above here is good? Um, stand up, bike up. Okay. Can you see? Um. Oh, Matt said that Dan needs to lick this. And I was like, no, nah, that's the growth. He's like, no, no, someone's got to lick it. It's I gotta, have to lick it. It's got to be Dan. <laughs> I was thinking about it. This bike is 80 years old. I don't think the modern vehicles that we have that are 80 years old will be able to be fixed in a parking lot in like, what is 80, 2020? Okay, let's fire it up and let this thing run and run out sort itself a little bit that's what that's what motorcycles do they sort themselves that sounds good I don't know what that is but I see. where was it coming from uh, this general area. We see, we're seeing little red things come off. And actually, I had this idea yesterday. We didn't do it, but we can go do it right now. Um, but we need a fire extinguisher. So before we let it run a little bit, let's make sure we have a fire extinguisher. Because at the very least, then you can put it out before the whole thing gets destroyed. You guys want to grab food? So we went into Walmart and bought a few fire extinguishers. And we grabbed some food. Then we waited for the rain to let up. Can't stop, won't stop. All right, so I think this is the best we're going to get. Uh, it's not... Tarantula. Tarantula? Tarantula. Tarantula. It's not tarantula. This might be the best we're gonna get. So let's fire this thing up. Let's make sure it goes through the gears. Make sure it doesn't fall off. Make sure nothing catches on fire. We'll do that in the parking lot and then we'll uh, we'll head out. I think it's still all primed up and everything. Oh, let's absolutely. Fire it up. I, yeah. Now notice what Craig is doing with the left twist grip after we get the bike running. This is important for me to establish my case against Craig who is sabotaging me later in the video. Which way is choke off? Nope. Is that off or this is off? No. This is off. Oh, that's off. Right. Full throttle, gas off. Yeah, let's try it. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> They're like chaps now. They're seven seconds old. That's the part I wanted to keep dry. <laughs> Watch out, Dan. I'm headed towards you. So as I climbed onto the 1942 Harley, which is one of the oldest and most archaic bikes I own, Craig jumped on the new KTM electric dirt bike, which falls on the complete opposite side of the spectrum in terms of technology. From the perfect combination of new and old, low tech and high tech, we pushed on towards home, and to be honest with you, I'm not sure which bike I'd rather not be on. The 80 year old bike that hasn't ran in 30 years, or the electric motorcycle in a rainstorm. All right, so it, it seems to be running pretty good. Uh, Craig uh, called out and said he thought it was running pretty lean. Why do you say it's running lean? Because when on diesel, you're that, that it's back pop, part it's, of that pop, it's, and it's, it's, it's a lean. Is it throwing flames? No, but it's a lean misfire is what it sounds like. We're going to top it off with fuel. Little this. Drink up, little fella. Ah, we'll just throw all that in. Yeah, that's just throw more than we need. No, hold okay. on, hold on. That's just cleaner. Oh. That'll clean the fuel injectors. 
good to have clean fuel injectors when you're on your motorcycle. Up, up, up. This was the last remaining perfect WLA gas cap, and I just dropped it. There we go. Now, these old stock 45s, they call them 45. I, I actually didn't know this. And I thought that they called them 45s because they were all titled as 45, but I think they're actually more, mostly titled as 42. Um, they call them old 45s because of the 45 cubic inch motor. But these old 45s, they didn't make big power. I'm actually not sure of how much power they made, but I don't think it was that much more than 20 horsepower. But what they were good at is they were reliable. And that's what Harley Davidson made them for. For the military, they just ran. They just worked very well. They were low compression engines. You could swap the motor out real quick. Just keep them going. And you can tell, because uh, 80 years later, this thing's still putting around. All this motorcycle riding has me thinking about a verse I was supposed to read in James for a Bible study that I skipped this week. James 1, 2, consider it all joy, my brethren, when you encounter various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance, and let endurance have its perfect result, so that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. Just as I was getting in the groove of things, Craig's bike failed him, proving once and for all that electric bikes are stupid. Now Craig and his precious electric bike. I'll push you, Craig. I ran out of e-juice. All right, so we're about an hour and a half, hour 20 minutes away from where we're trying to go. The electric bike ran out of juice. That's what Craig was riding as the uh, Chase camper vehicle. Uh, my bike seems to be running pretty good. So we're gonna keep on, uh, we're gonna keep on rolling. Keep on trucking? Without Craig. Craig's gotta walk home now. <laughs> Dang. All right, you can ride in the van. I'll we just. Got, we got room. Thumbs. I'll show a little leg. Show some leg. Show a little bit of chest. Now, while I was having the time of my life on this ride, I thought it was time to do something that I've never done before on a ride home. And that was give Craig a shot to finish it. Craig, I think it's time that you finish the ride home. Oh, geez. You're giving up. No, I'm not giving up. <laughs> you got this, Craig. I a road one. I always get the victory. Now you're going to get it. It's going to be awesome. Look at this. My pants melted on the on the fin. I'm gonna take these pants back. These are not what I was expecting. I mean, I just I sat on the bike and it. You did it. So none of our clips showed this, but, but the bike was really struggling up the hills for me. 
but not for Craig. And remember when I accused Craig of being a saboteur? Well, here's the rest of that story. Did you play with this at all? Well, you're, I think we were backwards. So when you pull it and it's in this position, it cleans up. Oh yeah, I was going backwards. Oh my God. Oh. Uh, better? Oh yeah. Oh, uh, now I got to run the way it should be. I <laughs> know, <laughs> right? <laughs> now I must give credit where credit is due. They're, these bikes are not easy to ride because almost all the controls are different except for the throttle. But Craig is doing a great job. That's why I'm proud to consider Craig my mechanic. This thing is fun. There he is. Woohoo! We made it. This is a good running bike. What do you think you told me about this? Oh, yeah, it goes this way, not this way. This, you want it like running is there. I want both of them back. Yeah, that's what you want to do. Like, vroom. All right, so I got a body shop buddy that I'm going to give a call. Hey, Robbie. What's going on? Hey, how are you? Hey, man, I got a question about a bike. How, um, uh, Robbie's in Utah. What, what, what time is it over there? It's 1.12. Nice. Hey, how, how soon can you get over here? I want to show you a bike that I got. You, next week, or can you be here sometime soon? I can be there probably next week. Cool, cool, and then I'll, we'll, I'll show you this thing and you can tell me what, uh, what it needs and what, what the deal with it is. All right, so, oh, let me hang up the phone. So Robbie's gonna fill us in on what this thing needs. <laughs> oh, sorry. Drink, drink it out of my container. That's thirsty. Well, while you're here, I got a bike I wanna show you. Here it is, 1942 WLA military bike. This is the motorcycle that won the war. This one's in really good shape, except for, let me, like, look at the- It's actually- Look at the paint, it's awful. Well, it's, it's not that it's awful, it's just old school. Is it? So this looks like a single stage from back in the day. So it probably doesn't have clear. Bodywork's not terrible. That's cool, look at this. They finished out their welds. They didn't even do anything besides just grind them. What period was this paint job? This is industry standard from probably, yeah, I'll, I'll bet it was 60s or 70s. Really? Yeah, but it's in pretty dang good shape. So here's, here's a problem with it. It's not the color I want. It's not original anymore. You don't like blue? I like blue. Listen, I, I like blue. I don't like this blue. Okay. And it has way too much chrome on it. This, 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 this rack, this stuff. All that, it, it, it's, it's gotta come off. And I wanna redo the body work. Not right now, but I could probably try to figure out a yeah. good body man. Yeah. Maybe a painter. And, All right, uh, I found one. You did? Yeah, it's out in Utah. All right. So, I think yeah, I you got to pay this one for yeah, me? Yeah, I think I could hook you up. Rather than shipping the entire bike, it might just be easier if you just stripped it down. Ride, ride the bike over. Well, yeah, yes, ride it from Pennsylvania. That would suck. <laughs> um, maybe send the tins out. Okay. And then we just take care of it for that, and then we can ship it all back. Is it safe to say you can get this thing better than brand new? Absolutely. Let's do it. All right, guys, we'll see you guys next time. Subscribe, and soon, this is going to be over at Robbie Layton's channel. We are Robbie Layton Nation. You can just look us up as Robbie Layton on YouTube and check it out. <laughs>